Two weeks ago, uh, by the way, I'm going to do a little introduction, kind of get the wheels turning, do a little uh, examination of self based on your homework, which was assigned last week, and uh, then kind of open it up for insights from the congregation, <clears throat> especially if you have biblical passages, that'd be wonderful, but if you don't, that's fine. And then I'll do a, a few more points on why hurricanes two weeks ago, or last week, why another hurricane? All right, that's, that's the track that we're on right now. Everybody good with that? Uh, I assume I'm not going to have to do one on why a third hurricane. That's the game plan, all right? Let's, uh, let's do pray together. Thank you, Father, for this great privilege we have to be able to assemble. We give you thanks for, for life itself that uh, all of us have been spared. And we give you thanks that uh, most of our properties uh, to varying degrees are structurally sound. And we give you thanks for uh, your provision uh, for repair and certainly the great privilege that we have to serve one another uh, to help with uh, preparing a uh, properties uh, for um, uh, living there again. Uh, thank you, Father, for these, your servants that have uh, just gone way beyond what is, what is human uh, to help each other out, and not just each other, but neighbors and even enemies. Uh, we thank you, Father, for your tremendous grace, and uh, pray that you'd be honored uh, today in uh, our focus on you and in your work in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. A little bit of ring in this thing. Maybe just bring the overall volume down, something like that. I don't know. Uh, that'll be great. Um, why hurricanes? Because God wants to work in us and through us. Amen? amen. Talked about that the last two weeks. Going to continue that uh, today. Now, one of the best days of my life was Thursday. That's the day following Milton. And it was one of the best days of my life because I tried to get, uh, at, the, at the invitation of the Anna Maria mayor, uh, I tried to get, I had to be on foot though, I couldn't drive around. Uh, I tried to get to every home that I could, had time to get to and the wheels to get to. These legs were wearing out. I was running in the water most of the time with boots. Uh, so I did what I could, uh, but as I called you from house to house to house to let you know uh, that your structure was solid and, uh, you know, whatever damage there was, uh, to hear your praise to God uh, was just, it was a, Thursday was a day of worship for me, probably at, an, at a level of intensity that I've rarely experienced. Now, that's, to, that's, that's an indictment on me, I, I agree. But I was so elated that most of our homes were fairly solidly intact. And it was just a great, great day. Some of us, uh, the, um, uh, a few of us, I'm not going to name names right now, a few of us had some significant damage, uh, but still the house was intact. So again, very, very uh, much of a day of worship. And I think the, uh, the word of the day, uh, the word of the week is the word thankfulness. We are a people that are extremely thankful. This, you know, could have been way different. And again, by the grace of God, uh, every day of my life living in Florida, uh, another escaped, escaped another one, and that's by the sovereign grace of God. I don't know why, but that's what he chose, and we're just left to be extremely thankful, and in our thankfulness, certainly to serve each other. Um, there's some hard circumstances with it. We're going to talk about the good stuff that God does through hurricanes, but we're, we're not going to stick our head in the sand. Uh, there are some hard circumstances. The hardest one is the possibility of maybe losing, losing in a sense that they're going to move somewhere else a few of us. I don't know that that's the case, but that's a possibility as people reassess their finances, their ability to repair, uh, that kind of thing. We're going to do everything we can to uh, not let anybody in this congregation move because we're in love with each other. I'm talking about every single person in this congregation is an incredible blessing. So we don't want to have anybody move away. If we were in the first century church at the beginning, uh, Acts chapter 2, 
uh, we would, I would, this message would be about moving in together because for spiritual survival, that's what it took in Acts chapter 2. The church was located in one place and because of that, folks moved in together and they shared finance. People lost their jobs, that kind of thing, and they pooled their money and they shared finance and their spiritual lives were on the line. Today, with the gospel all over America, uh, there's so many incredible churches all over the land. We're very grateful for that. We don't have the same, uh, it doesn't have the same importance to need to move in together, although I still encourage all of us to think about that, uh, but because we're going to have, we have uh, already, I think, a list of a uh, number of people that are looking for a place to stay. Uh, If we haven't shot that out, we'll we'll send that out to you. If you want to be on that list, uh, you know, we'll, we'll send that out. And no pressure on anybody, but just to think about that. But the bright side of somebody... Uh, leaving, like I, I just say, uh, uh, the Alvarezes, for example, um, um, they their uh, their roof was peeled back. The, uh, the the metal part of the roof, uh, half of it was peeled back and placed between their fence and their their side yard. I don't know, and, and the flooding uh, prior to that. Um, uh, I don't know where they're going to be at uh, uh, financially and all like that. So um, that's an example of going, you know, we, we'd, we'd love to put them up somewhere. We don't know. But um, Joyce and, and Dick, the, the Alvarez family, wherever they go, they'll take you with them and impact another congregation somewhere probably in America. And so that's a it's a it's a loss for us if they go. I don't know. Uh, that's an example, and they haven't told me they're going. But but that would be an example of a good thing even to happen after something that rips our hearts out. Does that make sense? So no matter how you slice this thing, God's gonna has and is gonna do great things through this time. Uh, there'll be some sorrow for maybe some folks that are leaving. Again, Dick and Joyce haven't said they're leaving. I'm just looking at it. I'm going, that w- that's a possibility of a couple. that would have to think about the possibility, but we want to do everything we can. And we'll be talking about helping folks uh, in a significant ways financially uh, in time upcoming, short time upcoming. All right. So some hard circumstances can, uh, can be taken place through this, but God is still doing incredibly good stuff. Quick review on your homework. Uh, I'm on the, uh, I have the same page as you have uh, in front of you, the sermon outline. It's it's, uh, entitled, Why Hurricanes? And uh, last week I encouraged you to to, uh, write in the word another. Why another hurricane? And a number, just by way of quick review, just theology, that's knowing God. Uh, we see the sinfulness of sin and fallen nature. Uh, we're in the, the uh, pangs of childbirth right now, coming into a brand new kingdom. Theologically, that's a reason. Uh, second uh, reason theologically is for us to see the image of God and the fallen nature. This brings out incredible good in, uh, in people that are even atheists because they bear the image of God. They're helping each other out. Uh, but it also brings out the fallen nature by the folks that are using this uh, to gouge and swindle one another. Uh, these, thing, these, these two truths are, are exacerbated, or we see them in a greater way uh, in a time of disaster. Uh, so observe those two truths and many other theological truths. Number two, uh, to pre- prepare us and our children for a life of ministry and mission. We looked at Paul in that journey, uh, Acts chapter 27, that journey uh, to um, being, uh, you know, a prisoner, uh, that journey from uh, Caesarea over in Palestine all the way across to Rome and how it was, a, it was a very arduous, very difficult journey, and because of that, they went very slowly, and because of that, a big wind caught the ship, and they were driven. They didn't know where in the Mediterranean. Uh, they came to a place of despairing even of life. Now, as if Paul didn't have it hard enough toward the end of his life, toward the end of his ministry. I mean, you know, God, you've done enough in this guy's life. You know, read 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. This is crazy. And God still allowed or caused all of this to happen. Why? Because Paul, God wanted even greater things, greater character in Paul as a minister, as a missionary. 
And so we, uh, we look at things uh, that way, God's preparation of us and our kids that are going through a tough time uh, for a life of ministry. Uh, number three, to mature us toward Christ-likeness in these qualities. Uh, contentment. How's that going for you all, by the way? I mean, honestly, it just, just honestly, when we look at having lost a lot of stuff right now, Karen, I'm not real sure where anything I own is. I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I found this shirt. I thought I brought a bunch of shirts. I don't know where they are. It's at David's house, David, David and Natalie. I'm not sure where almost, like stuff just everywhere. I don't know where stuff is. But you know what? Okay. All right. Right? Uh, well, I mean, but, but because now we're kind of, we, we loot, we've lost a lot of stuff. We're realizing what's life all about? You know, and, and it's okay, again, it's okay to cry over lost stuff. That doesn't make you a materialist. But I, I, I'm at least, God's work in me, I'm realizing a lot of this stuff that was so valuable to me, I don't know where it is. I'm fine. I, I really can live without almost everything I own. With food and with shelter, with these, we will be content. Paul said, I, I've come, I've learned how to be content. It takes a long time takes going through this stuff. God wants us to be a content people, a thankful people. So uh, I already rode that, uh, moving on, compassion. Y'all are doing that for, for people that are suffering globally. We get a little better, their taste, that they have to go face storms. Every storm is a difficult thing for them. Uh, grows us in compassion, thankfulness for electricity, running water and the like. Humility, we're not in control, hello. Servanthood, uh, that we're growing as we serve one another. Love, as we work together, we're growing in love for each other. Um, joy uh, is realized and grown in the, uh, when we don't feel like it. We feel like grumbling instead, but we choose joy. God grows us in that wonderful muscle. Peace, rest in God, shalom in him. Even when things are in turmoil, patience, uh, we get tired, we get cranky, a short fuse, and yet we choose to love and value each other and be patient with each other. And then faith, uh, somehow God uses uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8, difficult stuff that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Even if we go all the way through this to death, God grows us in faith, somehow using difficult stuff, not to weaken our faith, but by his grace working in us to strengthen our faith. Now, hope is the next one, next quality in Christ-likeness that I've listed here. Uh, breaks the gravitational pull of all this stuff on us that we can release it and focus on the kingdom to come and live for that day. Number four, a uh, thing that God does, he provides us opportunity to share the gospel. Help, healing, and hope. We closed with that last time. And now we're going to pick up with number five. Everybody, uh, everybody's good? Okay. Before we go into number five, though, you're going to give us uh, a new number five, new number six, new number seven. Uh, what is God doing in you? Who wants to share something that, that God is up to? Might be a, a testimony of one of these uh, that we just talked about or something else that we haven't talked about yet. Who would like to share? Didn't ex By the way, thank you so much for being here. I didn't really expect a group this big for you all to spend the gas and the time and the middle of the day and the Buccaneer game. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, you all are amazing. Um, uh, who would like to share anything that God did in you, uh, you while you're riding out the storm, after the storm, what's going on? Anybody have a testimony to share? Kind of tough to talk with this many people, but look, look around. These are all, this is your family. This, this, is, this is your family. I'm going to go with uh, this hand over here first. David, go ahead.
Yeah, that's great. That's James chapter 1, beginning of that chapter. Uh, and that, that, David, that's a level of worship. That's a depth of worship that we normally don't find opportunity to go there because we're just so incredibly blessed. You know, so that's a depth of worship, uh, which is what really our lives are all about. That's a lady that apparently knows God, apparently. Yeah, that's excellent. There was another hand. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this is Jared, uh, y'all know Jared, and uh, that's exactly right. Uh, again, a, a depth of gratitude that we don't normally experience, that we should maybe, but we don't. Yeah, yeah, that's excellent. Great, great observation. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Surely, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Surely, thank you. That's good. Uh, anybody else? Something that? Yes. Right here. Freedom Village, okay. Okay, Sue, thank you very much. Uh, anybody else? Something that, that you're observing God is doing in you? Go ahead. You're right, right over here. Go ahead. Yeah, Stoney, we appreciate your uh, your honesty, your integrity. Um, but re remember, we all ha we all have numerous emotions and 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 qualities that we're facing at the same time. So we are a people uh, that are sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. And I think we can be honest before God and do both at the same time. Uh, you. Uh, hanging around with you a little bit yesterday and some other days, you seem like a man that's uh, filled with rejoicing, quite frankly, filled with worship. All right. 
right. Um, yeah, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> but also, uh, you know, when you go through something like this, it, it heightens your spiritual sensitivity. Yeah. It's your awareness of God. And uh, thinking of the verse, Psalm 7328. You know, the psalmist says, uh, But as for me, the nearness of God is my good. We have a lot of good things, mm -hmm. but there's nothing. Mm. And then he goes mm -hmm. on and he says, I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge, and I will tell of all your deeds. Mm. And so, you know, his goodness helps us through these challenges, times of fear and loss, because we've made him our refuge. And his, he's holding on tight to us. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, Ken, thank you. It's a great word. And regarding Stony, this this is a little bit. We have different modes that we're in. We're, this is a little bit like being on that boat with Jonah. We we are actually looking for the guy to pitch overboard. Okay, so so we're looking for that guy. Uh, you know. So, all right. Who, who else? Uh, yes, right here. Yeah, right yeah, that's cool. True, true love and service. Yeah, so just blown away by that. yeah. Even after the hurricane, they've been pouring into this lady and taking her around. And, you know, just a beautiful example of service. Yeah, that's excellent. That'd be a great, great story. Uh, by the way, when we talk about, um, like you've seen certain people serve, you kind of ran in a circle yesterday, for example. There's the, what's developed, in, and we're going to talk about this either later today or another day. Um, but different, different kind of ministry teams have kind of like... Uh, organically or by the spirit has kind of developed. And so there's a lot, Steve, that you and I don't see that these folks are, are in. But say all that to say, um, we're going to try to, uh, it's hard shooting out messages right now. And Sandy, you're phenomenal. You, you are absolutely, she's doing, yeah, you, you need to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, she's doing what she can with limited power and inter no internet and I don't know what all somehow I don't know how you do what you do, but somehow getting the message out. But say all that to say, if you want to serve on a team, be it cooking, food stuff, um, you know, doing the chainsaw stuff or doing the mud out stuff or, or whatever, um, that's kind of our, uh, Sandy's kind of our focal point. Get, get the message to her. I say, I want to serve on a team. Uh, maybe I can do this, that, or the other. And uh, we don't want to leave anybody out in this because there's different teams that we, you and I don't even know about. 
you know, and which is very cool. Well, we love it. We love it. We want to be semi-organized, but we also want to be led by the Spirit. And maybe more on that later or probably another day, okay? But just let her know if you want to serve on a team. And by the way, um, uh, Jane, where's James at? Uh, fin- where is James? Is he near here by? I'm just going to say phenomenal job, James, wherever you are. <laughs> uh, that wasn't that a great song selection? I mean, just good to worship the Lord with solid, you know, solid lyrics. Uh, I think you had your hand up. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, can, can, go ahead. Hey, we really appreciate James. Yeah. Okay, it was them. Okay, okay, all right. Well, I mean, you guys are phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah thank you. And and there, it, it's just amazing you all are here. It's amazing a number of you are here. Um, actually, it's amazing anybody comes around me anytime, but but uh, any Sunday. Um, but you you guys are going through a crazy hard time with your place, and I think like another emergency, you got to get everything out of your place, like yesterday or something. So uh, you're going through a ridiculously hard time. Homeowners Association kind of a thing, you know, which is uh, up and down and mostly down. And so thank thank you for uh, your sacrifice and for being here today. We appreciate your leadership in, uh, in song as well, Savilla, on that last song. Um, anybody else? Uh, yes, right here. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Okay, cool. And 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 Dave's out working with this uh, sh- shoulder replacement thing or something. Yeah, that's inc- that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, thank. I mean, thank you. That's 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 very very cool. A uh, hand over here. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Yeah, that's great. That's good, 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 good. Excellent, love it. Uh, Anybody else want to share? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Day by day by day, that's a lie. And uh, we just appreciate your fellowship, your concern, your prayers. And just like God moved that storm out of the way, uh, He has done the, the, the same with, with her eyes. It's getting much, much better. Yeah, it's great. So continue to keep us in your prayers. And uh, we just, uh, you know, covet your prayers. And thank you for your fellowship. Yeah, let's, let's pray. Let's pray right now if we could. Father, we do thank you for our sister, and we do pray that you would, well, first of all, thank you for your healing uh, thus far on this eye, and we join together our hearts and continue to pray, Father, for uh, her perfect healing. Uh, Thank you for your grace, your provision, 
and uh, your work in each one in these days, physically and emotionally and definitely spiritually. Amen. Yeah, and brother, we're more than uh, surviving. We're, if I could say, I, you know, looking at most of these folks out here, we're thriving. We're thriving. We're thriving. Yeah, good. Uh, anybody else? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good word. God, we don't like these things, but God does work in our souls and our character to grow us in Christ's likeness in the, uh, the challenges, numerous, numerous challenges, including um, the, your particular shelter that you were in. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Bill, go ahead. Yeah. God has blessed us. Yeah. Uh, and then we realize how grateful we need to be and not should have been. Right. Yeah, you and me both, brother. Yeah. And the comfort of God's word or even reading it by flashlight or whatever. Okay. Okay. So uh, if you couldn't hear him, the comfort of God's word, even reading it by flashlight, and then uh, just this whole thing of uh, being reminded of needing to be thankful. And, uh, yeah, one of my great sins, uh, just ingratitude other people and toward our Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, anybody else? I'm not going to go very long because uh, that was, that was a good, that was the good part of the sermon. That's an excellent sermon right there. I, I think that was an excellent sermon. I'm going to give you a couple of points. Um, it would just go a few more points in this thing and, and, uh, and call it good today. Uh, and then, um, uh, we will, uh, worship God in song. If James is here, if not, we'll just pronounce a benediction. Y'all take plenty of time to uh, greet one another after the uh, the gathering. So I'm joining you in point number five. This is uh, why hurricanes or why another hurricane uh, on your um, sermon guide. And so this is point number five of 12. To develop the priesthood. Hmm. Really? Hurricanes develop the priesthood. What, what in the world, where, where's this, where's this boy's brain at? Priests, hurricanes, is there some connection between the two? You remember in uh, our study in First Peter, which was happening prior to Helena or Helene. How do you say that, by the way? Is that Helena or Helene? I've heard it pronounced both ways on Helene. Helene. Is it Helene? Okay. Silent E. Okay. Anyway, so prior to Helene. Um, first Peter chapter two, y'all are, that's Sony. That's the official Greek. It, it really is. It's, it's, it's plural. Y'all are a royal priesthood. That's y'all together corporately. We are, you know, there was a priest, a, a, a priestly group in Israel. And now in the new Testament, y'all are that priestly group. What do priests do? They represent people to God and God to people. That's what priests do, okay? And that's who y'all are along with other things. And so check this out. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 17. We're looking at now the high priest who leads the way for us priests, all right? And if the high priest leads the way in something, 
pretty good for us to follow in his steps. Everybody good? Everybody get the track? All right. So Hebrews chapter 2, I encourage you to read the entire chapter. Start with chapter 1. It's a great book. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17. He, that would be the Lord Jesus Christ, had to, those are important words, had to, is really imperative, really important for him to be made like his brethren. Who are his brethren? Who are the brothers of Christ? His family. Everybody who's trusting Christ today. He had to be made like his brethren in all things. Every one of these phrases matter when you read in Scripture. In everything, he had to be made like his brethren. Well, to do that, what did he need to do? This was so important that God, Almighty God, outside of time and space, took on humanness to incarnate, that means take on flesh, to incarnate himself on this planet. Uh, Ephesians 4 uses, he came to the lower regions of the earth. Interesting language used there. It means he came to the planet, but not just to the planet. He didn't come to live in a, a palace. Where did he come to live? He came to live as a, well, he's a carpenter, mason for a while, and then for three and a half years as a, a street guy, traveling preacher. Had the clothes on his back, food, slept wherever with his guys that he was training to be the initial priesthood and we are following in those ranks. Why? What's going on? Listen now, verse 17 of Hebrews 2. He had to be made like his brethren, that would be us, in all things that he might become... Now, that's a strange thing to say about God, that God becomes something. But, but follow the trend of thought, that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. In other words, God, he is God and humanist. He's always been perfect, and he, always, he already knew everything, and he knows every feeling that every believer will ever have and anybody else will ever have. He knows everything you're going through. He knows all of it, but we don't get it that he knows it unless we really think he's experienced it. Track with me here, or track with the Lord here or my thinking on what I think this passage means for us. He became a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, which is everything that's good and important, to make propitiation, that means to, to, bear, the, to bear our sin and to bear the wrath of God upon our sin, to go to that level of service, he took on humanness, to go to that level of service, which we're never called to go to that depth of a level of service, but he did, as our example. For he himself, or I'm sorry, verse 18, for since he himself was tempted or tried in that which he suffered, and there's a lot of ways to suffer. We go through anything we don't like, that's suffering. No matter what the source is, five possible sources of that, it doesn't matter what, the, what it is. He was tempted, in other words, tempted to turn from God and to do what felt good, not serve others because that's difficult, et cetera, et cetera. And since he himself was tempted in that which he suffered, what does it say? He is able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. Eric, I, I got to be careful about pointing people out because I can point to all of y'all. I know a little bit about what all of y'all have been doing. I don't know the half of it, I'm sure. But this guy's traveling from way out east. Like every chance, every chance he's got with his, with his family to just serve folks in crazy hard ways. Like what's up with that? Why would he identify? He could stay out. You could stay, Eric, you could stay out east and just take care of your family and your stuff and yet what's driving you what's going on and the rest of you it's the same it's the same thing what's what's going on and what's going on is god is working in you and through you to develop you as a priest a representative of god to people and people to god you're an intermediary and how do you do that 
by, even if you're not, and you might be living in a house that is untouched by either hurricane. You got your power on, you got your water on, you got your, your cable TV and, you know, whatever, satellite and, you know, internet and you know, whatever, whatever. But y'all are leaving that to come be in the mud, literally, with, with those who are in the mud. And what's, why is God calling you to do it? To make you into a member of the priesthood that you're able to continue the rest of your life to come to the aid of others. So I, I want us to get this picture. This is so huge. And that what we have before us is maybe, hopefully, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to go into the mud following in the steps of the Lord Jesus Christ that in the process of serving and loving and crying with each other and others and even our enemies, God would mold us into the priesthood that he wants us to be, that we are able to come to the aid of those who are thus tempted. Does that make sense? I don't, again, I, I, I say this like every week, I don't like the plan. But Jesus led the way in this plan. And if he did that, and then Keith, he propitiated our sin, which you and I can't do, praise God. <laughs> but he went to that length. What, and Keith's all over, by the way, I, I could start naming, then we could be the rest of the day. Keith's all over the place helping people with their flooded cars, and, and you know, as he always does. He, there's an ultimate service servant right here. Uh, but what's God doing in you? Growing as you as you got grease all over and you're you know doing what you can to get people's cars running. What's God doing? He's turning you into a greater and greater priest to represent God to people and people to God. And there's no you can go to seminary for a, for a, for 50 years and not learn what you're learning. You only you only learn that by getting dirty. Not morally dirty, but physically dirty. Y'all hear? You get it? Okay. So God's turning us into the priest he wants us to be, that we are made able to come to the aid of others. Number six. And again, don't, don't worry about it. I'm not going to go very much further because we've got important things to do after this. Uh, number six. To develop spiritual gifts and abilities. And it's just, it, you know, it, it, see, there it is again. You know, it's just nice to see the Spirit of God guiding folks into using the things that God has gifted them to do. Apparently, God's not given everybody the ability to operate a chainsaw with a four-foot bar. <laughs> Apparently. Okay? Though I'd like to see everybody try it one time, but some of them would die doing it. Uh, but we have different gifts. And no, it's not one gift's not one better than another one. So whatever, whatever, how God is, whatever ability God's given to you, whatever gift he's given to you, then use that. Just come before the Lord and say, what has God given me the ability to do? And just to see all the different gifts operating, it's just done after an intense or in an intense situation it's just done all the more. And I think, I think in this congregation, there's going to be a lot of folks coming to realize the spiritual gift that God has given to them. So you don't have to do what anybody else is doing. Make it a matter of prayer. Young people as well, youth as well. Love to see you guys out serving. But, but be searching, what has God wired you to do? And let's continue to grow in that together. So, so 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 as each one has received a gift, that would be a gift from God, a spiritual gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards. In other words, you're entrusted with this ability, that, uh, uh, this, that you're, 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 you're a steward of it. You're going to give an account for it. God's given us abilities. Employ it as good stewards of the, what a great phrase, the manifold grace of of God. That's the multifaceted grace of God. That God shows, what he's, what's he saying here is God shows his grace, Ken, through different ones, different instruments, different points of contact in different ways. Ed, is that right? 
Different points of contact in different ways, God manifests his grace. And so he's got to do it through all of the priesthood, not just one of us. None of us even comes close uh, to uh, manifesting all of the gifts. Not even close. So it's the whole, all the priesthood working together as God has given them different gifts, utilizing those in a, in a heightened, more difficult situation to grow us in our operation of the uh, spiritual gifts. Uh, might, I'm going to do number seven and eight and call it good. Number seven, because I really want to talk about this one. To disciple us corporately. Now, the big word there is corporately. Now, I want us to think about this this week. When you go through a tough situation, Bob, for example, you're going through a, re, you're going through a Carly, you're going through a really hard time. And, you know, so something happened financially, the bottoms come out, something happened to your house, flood, you know, whatever, because the plumbing broke. You know, you're going through a crazy hard time. The rest of us can kind of come around and kind of sense what you're going through. But this is different. This is everybody going through it together. And, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm using the word everybody because I know y'all and some of you are high and dry with your power on. You're looking forward to the second half of the Bucks game. And I mean, everything's working. You got no, no issues at all. And you can stay hunkered down in your house and you know it. And yet everybody here, and I'm looking at every face. Everybody here is doing what they're wired to do to come out of that house and live this thing with each other together. And so this is a corporate experience. That's why, uh, Justice, this is, this is really uh, possibly, hopefully, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for this congregation to live this experience and learn from this experience together. That's why we had sharing a little while ago. Because I'm going through work, working, cutting, doing whatever I'm doing, and I'm developing these points in my head as I roll a deck through Scripture, and just I, it's always going on in my head, all these passages and stuff. And then I hopefully find a place to jot it down, or I forget it at my age, you know. And so that's where this stuff has come from. But we're going through this stuff together. This is a corporate experience. And so I very much appreciate y'all for taking the, the, the opportunity to spend time with each other. I just turn you on as, as a homework assignment to Philippians chapter 1, the end of that chapter. It's not written on your paper. The end of that chapter and the beginning of chapter 2. And it goes something like this. Verse 27. Now, the, these folks in Philippi are facing persecution, which is one kind of trouble that people go through. We're going through, for the most part, a different kind of trouble. Not many of us are persecuted too badly compared to these folks. Uh, verse 27, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel. What does that mean? The gospel is this unifying thing where we are one with Christ and therefore one with each other as a congregation and beyond to other, other congregations as well. Like this one right here. This is, I, I went to Sunday school here and the worship time here. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. This great church. Solid Bible teaching. Uh, music was incredible. Just, I just loved it here. Uh, th these folks. Only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come to see you, Paul, speaking to these folks or remain absent, I, I want to hear that you are what? Standing firm in one spirit with one mind or try to Think what each other is thinking. Try to try to try to try to be in each other's head, so to speak. Striving together for the faith of the gospel. Some of us come to this is frustrating stuff, especially when you're looking at your finances. As you go, there's no way I can repair this house. I, I might have to live a Salvation Army. I mean, th this is some difficult stuff that some of us are going through. But we want to strive together. For the faith of the gospel, that nobody loses their faith, but that we all grow in our faith by coming alongside each other. Verse 28, don't be alarmed by opponents. These would be opponents to bring uh, men, to bring uh, distress on, on the Christians. For us, it's this, this uh, environment, uh, this, this hurricane, um, and maybe opposition by some other people. It has, verse 29, it has been granted to you for Christ's sake. Not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. What? It's been granted. This is a gift. 
It's been granted to you to not only believe in Christ, but also to suffer. Now, again, these folks, persecution for us. Uh, God granted to us this hurricane, as difficult as it may be. And you're experiencing the same conflict which you saw in me, now here to be in me. We talked about Paul's conflicts. Therefore, if there's any encouragement in Christ, if Christ has encouraged you, if there's any consolation of love, if there's any fellowship of the Spirit, any affection and compassion, in other words, in Christ, in your relationship with Christ, my relationship, has he encouraged you? Has he brought consolation in your life? Has he brought a koinonia, a doing life together? Has he brought affection and compassion? Have you felt that from the Lord? If that's the case, verse 2, make my joy complete. And I can say this as, as, as one of your pastors. I'm going to speak this for the rest of the pastors here. Make our joy complete by being of the, verse 2, same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on this purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, let each of you regard one another as more important than yourself. Have this mind in you, which was also in Christ, who although he exists in the very form God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, held onto, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. Being made in the likeness of men, being found in the appearance of men, he humbled himself even to the place of death, death on the cross. Back to that starting passage. He propitiated our sin as our high priest. And so he calls us again in this passage to follow in his step, but in this passage to do it together. Amen? All right? And so I appreciate you who are high and dry to be able to come alongside each other. I said uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, two points, that was one of them. Uh, whichever point that was, I'm lost. Uh, what, what, what point was that? Seven. Okay. Yeah. The disciple us corporately. So we're going through this together. Some by your own choice because you're high and dry. Then I want to close with this one. Number eight. To provide opportunity for admiration, appreciation, and adoration. Just, just forget the word appreciation for right now because it makes it too complicated, okay? Just kind of cross that out for the moment, okay? I just want to look at two words, and, and I, again, we're going to close with this. Admiration and adoration. It provides a hurricanes, or another hurricane provides opportunity for that. What am I talking about here? When, when you go and you look at a sunset, you know, sunsets are different, or you look at the Grand Canyon, you look at, you know, whatever and spectacular thing there is on the planet or the, 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 the stars or, you know, whatever it is, there's a, an appreciation for what's in front of you. There's admiration. I admire the sunset. But what's really in my heart is what? Adoration. I adore God. I adore the artist that did this. Does that make sense? So we, we admire one another and other cool things that God's doing through other people and other churches, but our adoration is for our Lord. And they go together. And, and I'm going to say it again, this man right here, Steve, I admire this guy. And I, I admire, Tanya, I admire you, and, and you, you guys are out helping as best you can as well. Um, but I admire you, Tanya, for, for doing what you're doing, but for letting this guy spend all kinds. You got, a, you got a mess at your place, and you're letting this guy lead the way for this congregation, including me, with his boys. They, they're seeing what's, what's going on. They're growing up to be men early. And, and, and so I can pick on him because he's, he's staff, okay? So he gets paid to, to take the beating. Uh, yeah, I, I love this man. I, 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 I admire this man. But you know what? I adore the artist that's working, that created this man, that's working in this man. And so as I admire you all and what you're doing with each other, there's adoration for God. We worship God. We see what each other's doing and we, uh, what God's doing in each other in a difficult time, a heightened difficulty, and we in the process of all of this, are filled with adoration of our God.
Amen. Watch each other. Listen for what's going on. Appreciate each other. Admire each other. But the adoration goes to the artist, not the creation, goes to God. This is a heightened time of worship. And as I see y'all doing all these different things, I am, I am just filled with worship. Everybody good? And in this group, I don't know that I need to share the gospel because y'all are believers, but uh, let's thank the Lord in prayer for the gospel. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for the privilege to walk with you. And the, and the, the, the foundation of that privilege, the foundation of it is the cross. Lord Jesus, you entered time and space and you took on humanness and you came to the lower regions of the earth and you lived a perfect life, represented God to men and men to God perfectly as our example priest and then you went to a cross as the perfect priest and the perfect sacrifice and on that cross Lord Jesus, we, we worship you with these words, you took our sin, even the sin committed today. You took our sin on your body on the cross. You bore the very wrath of deity on your divine body. The fullness of the wrath due to us. You drained the wrath of deity on your own body. And you died in our place. You rose again three days later. You've offered us the gift of eternal life. And I trust that every, every person here has trust, is trusting you for that gift. And so together, we're all equal. We're at the foot of the cross. And we just worship you. We adore you. And, and, and we thank you anew and afresh, even right now, for, I don't know why, but showing us mercy again in, in this near miss, uh, this wake-up call, if you will, for many, giving us the opportunity to bring help, healing, and hope to others. But this, this work in our souls as we go through the hours and days and weeks and for some months upcoming helping each other and others out, coming alongside, bringing help, healing, and hope. Grow us rapidly in what we hope is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Thank you for your work in us and your work through us. Have your way. In your name and for your glory, we, we pray. Amen.